Hello, I'm Donnie Hinsky, and you're watching the Dynamic Machine University YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the basics on what you need to know for changing collets on a Citizen Swiss machine and getting it ready for the next job. Let's get started. So we're here today with an L32, and I know what you're thinking. I have an A20, L20, this video's not going to work for me. It will. The collet changing procedure on every single Citizen is almost exactly the same thing. So we are going to get started now with the subspin. The first thing you will have to take off is the cover that goes over the subspindle cap. To remove this, simply loosen and remove both screws as shown here, and then slide the cover off once you get them out. Next, you will need the wrench and spinner wrench that came with the machine to break the subcollet cap loose. All I do here is give it a little slam, like so, then the subcollet cap should unscrew. Once you remove the cap, the collet sleeve will now slide out and you can access the collet. Now you want to go into MDI. Type in M10 and press start. This will make it so you can access the part ejector. You should need a wrench to break it loose, but I kind of cheated here and didn't show it. Next onto the guide bushing. A tool came with your machine that fits into the holes in the face of the guide bushing unit. Once in place, you can lock it down with the silver screw in the base of the handle. When finished, it never hurts to check to make sure it's secure. Now you will want to open the door that allows you access to the main spindle area. Another tool came with your machine so you can take out the guide bushing. When inserted properly, you will feel it fall into place. And once in place, push the Allen key extension to the set screw and break it loose with a 2mm Allen wrench. Once the set screw is loose, you can use the hand tool to loosen the nut that holds the guide bushing in place. and it's fine when you get to a certain point that you use your hand to take it the rest of the way out. Now that we have this out, let's take a look at how it works. You can see there are three holes on the back here. These holes are for the pins on the end of the hand tool. The set screw, here when tightened, pushes on a pin that's perpendicular to it. This opens the slot, as shown here, which expands the nut inside the guide bushing and keeps the guide bushing in place. On to the main collet. This is very similar to the sub collet, so just take your wrenches and give it a little tap here. Just like the sub spindle, you will need to unscrew the cap all the way. Once the cap is off, you can then remove the sleeve, allowing you to take out the collet. Next, we're going to want to open up our anti-vibration devices. On this machine, you have two sets of rollers. You have a roller at the end of the bar feeder and a roller at the back of the spindle. To open these, simply break loose this nut here. I usually bring it all the way up just to be safe. And then bring down the set screw. This will make sure they're at the biggest position they possibly can be. And finally, the bar feeder collet. This one is pretty simple. Just take a small Allen wrench and push the pin out of the side of the collet. Once you remove the pin, you can then slide your bar feeder collet off. But because this is a collet I'm going to use in the next job anyways, I'm going to put it back on. Or at least try to. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Your bar feeder collet should now be in place. Now that we've got everything clean, you're going to need to put the new collets and guide bushings into the machine. And starting with the main spindle, we're just going to put the collet into its sleeve and slide the sleeve into the spindle. You'll need to line up the keyway so it slides in all the way. After you've done that, you can put the cap back on. It's important to note here that you don't really need to put that much torque on this cap. 
just a good little bit of pressure and it should stay on just fine for the whole entire time. Now it's time to put the guy bushing in. I find this a lot easier if you search for the keyway inside the guy bushing, which lines up with one of the four holes in the face, and then aim the guy bushing keyway towards you so you can see exactly where you're putting it, and it should slide in a little bit easier. At this point, you will want to lock the guy bushing down again. This prevents the guy bushing from pushing out when you install the nut that holds the guy bushing in place from the other side. Now you're going to want to put the nut that holds the guy bushing in place back in. It's important when you finally get this all the way down that you don't over tighten it, because if you do, you could jam the bar in there when you first put it in the machine. What I do here is I usually go all the way until I feel it finally bottom out, and then go back a quarter turn or so. Then, to be safe, you're going to want to use your 2mm Allen wrench to lock everything down. And no, you don't have to drop your Allen wrench like I did there. Before we can put our sub collet in, we'll need to put the ejector in. Just screw the ejector in right where you took it out, and tighten it down with a wrench. At this point, you're going to want to go back into MDI and change that M10 to an M11, and press start. This will take the ejector back, so now you can put your sub collet in. Before I put my sub collet in, I usually press on it a few times to check the spring and make sure everything feels right. Then line it up with the keyway and slide the sleeve in. At this point you can just put the cap on, very similar to the main spindle. Once you got it in as far as you can get it, use the wrench and spanner wrench just to tighten it down the rest of the way and get it snug for the job. Now you're going to want to add the cover. You'll notice there's a hole on the bottom. This is for coolant to drain through, so you're going to want to have it aiming down. At this point, just put the two screws back in, and the cover will be held in place. Now you can insert a bar to get started with the settings of your collets and the rest of the machine. After you load your bar, you're going to want to set these wedges to make sure that the bars don't topple over each other as they roll down the bar feeder. I usually go for about a sixteenth of an inch gap here. That's really all that's going to be necessary to keep the bars from flipping over each other. Next is your setting for how big of a bar you want to load. As you can see here, the setting prior to this was way too big for this. So you're going to need to find the setting, this bar feeder looks like this, and you're going to want to lower it to the appropriate diameter so it only loads one bar at a time. You can double check this setting by lifting a bar and seeing if only one can fit. At this point, you can load a bar into the bar feeder collet. Once it starts moving forward though, you want to be cautious not to go too far. I usually go just past the rollers, like shown here. Now we can set our first set of rollers. I usually bring them down to about a 1 or 2 millimeter gap so it helps guide the bar into the back of the collet. Depending on the bar stock you have, you may have to adjust this later on to make it sound better. You do definitely want a gap here though. You don't want it so tight that the bar can't move freely. After you've got it set, lock it down with this nut here and you can move forward. Now using the bar feeder, you want to insert the bar into the machine so we can set the main collet. To set the main collet, you're going to want to go through this back door here and access this cover so you can change the setting on the collet. This is what your main collet looks like when it's functioning. Depending on the material you have, you may have to change this because it might be too loose or too tight. To loosen or tighten your collet tension, you will need a 4mm Allen wrench and break this screw loose right here. Now, 
you can rotate the nut that sets your collet tension. And to show you what it looks like when it's too tight, I'm gonna go a little too far here with my setting. This will show you that half a turn is actually a lot when setting your collet. As you can see here, the collet can no longer close, so I'm gonna to have to go back the other way. Once you're confident in your setting, you can tighten the screw back down and then double check that the collet still functions properly. Now we can set the anti-vibration device on the back of the main spindle. As you can see here, it opens and closes with the collet. As with the other set of rollers, I usually try to get a one millimeter gap here. Now that you've got everything set the way you want it, you can put the covers back on and close the doors and move forward to the guide bushing. Now you can jog the bar forward into the guide bushing. You want it sticking out about an inch or so, so you can set it. Bring your spindle back so you have room to work. Lock the guide bushing once again. At this point, your bar should be loose. You want a snug fit in the guide bushing, so insert the tool to tighten it. Break loose the set screw from earlier. Now you can change your guide bushing setting. Simply tighten it down and check as you tighten it to see where your bar is. Once you get a snug fit that you feel comfortable with, you can then tighten the set screw and lock your setting in place. Try to keep in mind that this is a very small set screw and extremely easy to strip out. You don't need to put that much torque on it, so just simply snug it and remove the tool and we can move forward. After you set your guy bushing, you do not want to be the guy who leaves this tool in here, so make sure you take it out. Now we will need to access the subspindle collet tension setting. To get to it, you'll need to take the guard off the top of the subspindle. And just like the main spindle, you're going to want to break this screw loose here. But unlike the main spindle, what I do with the subspindle is I back it off so I can get a more accurate setting. You're now going to want to insert a pin that's the same diameter as the part you're holding into the subspindle. Now you can lock your subspindle and bring forward the ring so you can get it to a point where it snugs down on the part. Once you get it to a point where it stops, Use these tools here to tighten it down so you know you have good grip on the part. Now because this part's going to have a lot of tool pressure on it, I open my sub collet and go about another quarter turn. Tighten the screw back down and your setting will be in place. When you're finally finished, Make sure you double check the collet function so that way it doesn't fault out when it goes to grab on a part. And once you're done with that, you can put the covers back on, close the machine, and continue on to touching off tools. Well, that about wraps it up for our first video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any ideas for future videos, you want to recommend anything, feel free to comment below. Thank you.